I want to be uh, very helpful to my people. I want to be as helpful as possible to my people to help people to think, to 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 uh, to love, to, to 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 share. I just want to be helpful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's it's inside of me. Whatever it does. It's, that it's inside of me that what I've done to help people, to share. So I say things like, you know, red, black, and green. If you think about it, you know what I mean. The so red is for the eastern sun towards a new day just begun. Red is for the blood we shed. Red is for our millions dead. Red is for our liberation, fighting for our own black nation. Black is for our motherland. Black is for the proud black man. Black is for the beautiful face of a proud and beautiful race. Black is for the soil we need so our nation we can feed. Green is for the seed of freedom planted in our minds. Green is for that seed to grow free from western vines. Green is for the fertile fields. Seeds from fertile minds will yield. Red, black, and green, if you think about it, you know what I mean. My name is Roy Ayers. Everybody loves the sunshine, and you should too. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and uh, it, was, uh, it was wonderful. Uh, it was a wonderful childhood. Uh, my mother and father were not rich, but they were loving. I could go, go and play at, at Mrs. Clark's house. She was our choir director, and her son, her son, we played pianos. I have three sisters. My sisters were very uh, encouraging. They wanted me to, to play music. I, I, of course, I wanted to play music. My mother and father bought me a set of vibes. Uh, a set of vibraphone, a, a, a very cheap set. It was $300, but it was a, a set of vibes, and I wanted to play the vibes. And it took a lot for them to, to get up the money. I was very much influenced by Lionel Hampton. I went to see him when I was five years old. My mother and father took me to see him, and he gave me a set of vibraphone mallets. He was uh, such an exciting performer. He knew how to to to. to Get a, get an audience in the groove. It was just a wonderful experience uh, for me to uh, to have gone to his show, and, and and I was my mind was blown away. I always knew I was going to be like Lionel Hampton. I loved him, man. You know, I, I I fell in love with him when I played Village Gate. Lionel Hampton came to see me play. I had arranged a performance with with him. I told my agent who was the same agent that Lionel Hampton had, that was Oscar Cohen. Uh, and, and so I said, can you bring him down, please? And Lionel Hampton came down to the village gate in 1976 or 77. I said, is Lionel Hampton in the house? And, and, and he, uh, he, came up, he came up on stage and he said, yes, I am. And I said, would you please welcome Lionel Hampton? Lionel Hampton, played with me, my God. We played uh, Flying Home. Oh man, Fly, that was his big hit. I had rehearsed the band and made sure that we knew everything on it. Oh man. I started playing in, in high school. I was improvising, but you know, I wasn't as fluent as I became. I didn't really just get into the, to the groove until I played with Chico Hamilton. And then I worked with, uh, Herbie Mann called me it was uh, quite an experience for me for, uh, to have, have done uh, d the records that I've done with him. Herbie Mann was, was, was a great artist. I think we uh, did a, a couple of couple hundred thousand seats, in, but, but, but big shows, big, big shows with other acts, you know, in Texas and different places. Myself, uh, Buster Williams is a bass player, uh, 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 Bruno Carr and the drummer, and Sonny Chirac, uh, guitar player. And 
me, myself, he took all of us to a bank, all of us to a bank. We did not have, musicians don't have credit. He took us to a bank and he co-signed Herbie Mann. Herbie Mann is Jewish. Herbie Mann signed for us to, to get to get money for, uh, and credit, credit, credit cards. My God, he was a wonderful guy. He, man, he was thinking. There were so many great things that, uh, that happened, uh, especially uh, that were happening with, on radio. Uh, because that, that was the real, real big, they had television and stuff, but radio was really big in Los Angeles, California. And I can remember going to see uh, Cannonball Adderley, who played with Miles Davis, uh, even Miles Davis. Uh, 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 Ramsey Lewis uh, was very much part of my life. Uh, and I, I've, I've even played shows with Ramsey. But Herbie, Herbie Mann, when I did the show with Herbie Mann, it was, I got rap, Miles Davis, Herbie Mann, uh, uh, Thelonious Monk, uh, Nina Simone. Uh, my God, all of these great artists. It was so fantastic, so fantastic, man. Leonard Feather produced my first album. Leonard Feather, the author of the Encyclopedia of Jazz, he said, uh, Roy, uh, uh, have you recorded your own album? I said, no, I'm not ready. So he said, yes, you are. So I said, oh. And that, that led me to United Artists uh, and, the, and, and my first album. He kind of like knew I was ready, you know. He knew I was ready. He said, he said you know, he could, he, could, he could just see and tell. You could see it now. It was changing all the time, but, but there, there, were, there were great groups, you know. There were great, great, great sounds. James Brown was uh, very much an influence in my life. He was a funk man, the funk, the, the, the captain of, of funk. And he, he brought, about, brought about a very good consciousness uh, about, you know, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm black and I'm proud. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was great for kids to, to, to sing and laugh and, laugh and be happy. It just made, made, made me feel good. Jazz funk. Jazz with a funky beat. That's what jazz funk is. Jazz with a funky beat. So it's the funk. It, um, straight ahead jazz. Is straight ahead, swinging. But funk, the jazz with a funky beat. James Brown, that's the funky beat. And you take jazz, you just put them together. You got Jimmy Smith, who played an organ, you know, and uh, he was a, a great innovator. Groovy, groovy, soulful music. Jimmy put out a lot of albums, a lot of, a lot of records. That's one of the groups that I admire, Jimmy Smith. Herbie Hancock was, oh my God, oh. When he did the, the, the Rocket, that was fabulous, you know. So there was, was, was always a creative thing. Everybody was, you know, was, was, was uniquely different. And, and they still possess that, that same feeling of jazz, of funk jazz, you know. And Herbie was, Herbie was wonderful, I just, I love Herbie. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Herbie did uh, one, two, three, three albums with me. I remember one time that I said, uh, I, we were listening back to the tracks, and uh, I said, I said, uh, Herbie, I kind of messed up in, in, in this part of my in, 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 <laughs> And Herbie said, it sounds cool to me. <laughs> I, I said, oh, wow. That was wonderful because he's such a fantastic soloist. Herbie Hancock is a genius, that's right. I said, oh, he's wonderful, man. Just wonderful. He just, you know, he was such a complete, he is such a complete musician. He, uh, he did all the, all, all the arrangements, it, every arrangement that was per perfect. You can't even tell him what to do because he's so music, musically inclined 
to make the music right, man, is so, so he's so sharp. He's such a sharp musician, you know. There are several several musicians like this, but very very few, you know. But Herbie 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 Hancock is all oh, exceptionally good. I used to sing in the choir and all the stuff, and I said, "Oh, I'm playing the vibes now." And so, as a young young entertainer, I I I, I didn't sing. I had to change my music because I had to. I I knew I had to incorporate singing. I realized the the, the 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 music had to be larger and and bigger. Myrna Williams, uh, she was my manager, and she uh, she said, "Roy, why don't you call your group Roy Ayers Ubiquity?" And I said, "Wow, what's that mean?" She said, "To, to be everywhere at the same time." Of course, you can be everywhere. I said, "She said if everyone has one of your albums, right?" So that that's how it became uh, Roy Ayers Ubiquity. My life, my life, my life, my life in the sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. To feel what I feel when I feel what I feel when I'm feeling in the sunshine. Everybody knows this song. And do what I do when I do what I do when I'm doing in the sunshine. Oh man, everybody loves this song. It's 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 a, like a, my my national anthem. You know it. It, it, it just clicks in. I say, the, the, the chords play, da, 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 and so everybody says, oh! I just, I can play the one song, one song. It can play one song, and they'll say, oh, yeah. They go crazy, man. Every artist. I thought about the sunshine, the California sunshine, where I'm from. The promotion people at the record companies, they, they, they pick a song. And I didn't even, for instance, this song, uh, Everybody Loves the Sunshine, they picked that song as a single. Wow. And, and it took off. It was great. And I had no idea. I thought it was a lot of great, a lot of music that was greater than that song. It's a slow song. My life, my life, my life, my life. And I said, my God, it's probably one of the greatest feelings in the world when people let you know how how the music has affected them. Oh man, and then when you get the radio out and, and it's all over, all over the radio, my God, it's no greater feeling than that. When Mary J. Blige did it, uh, she, she, sold, she she sampled it. Oh my God, it, it's just wonderful, man. It, it, you know, the money comes, comes in, oh my God. It really is really good. When you have a hit, just one hit, one hit can, can maybe last a lifetime. I wrote the song, Life is Just a Moment, uh, Life is Beautiful and Free. When we did the part, uh, la 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 la, life is just a moment, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great. That song it was inspired by, uh, by my, my ex conger player who passed away. He was a congero, congero. We used to sing it sing this song all the time, all, when we were not even performing, you know. Uh, he, he, Channel, Channel O'Farrell was his, was his name. I still play that song, uh, but I, I dedicated it to Channel O'Farrell. I miss him, he was really wonderful. But he had, he had kind of like had my back, you know, he was, he was like covered me, you know. We live in Brooklyn, baby. The song is actually written by Harry Whitaker. We did it in the studio spontaneously, and he, he wrote out all the chart for Ron Carter. And Ron Carter, uh, he, he couldn't, couldn't, couldn't play the music because he had to get his fingering together. And he's a great bass player. He's a great bass player. He's a, one, of, one of the true, true, truly great players. He played with, with Miles Davis, and he's a great bass player. He is, uh, and, and when Harry, when Harry said, when he when he couldn't play play the bass, he couldn't boob it over da 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 da. Oh my God! It was just a line. It was a heavy line. And he said, uh, Harry said, "We got him." <laughs> he said, he, he, I mean, "This is a great great reader. It's he, a great great interpretation." But he couldn't play it because he got it together. But just, yeah, the finger. 
Oh, it was, it was fantastic. Ba ba da ba da ba da da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da da ba 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 da Woo! That was something. Searching. Oh yeah, yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. Searching. Um. Say butterfly up in the sky. Got a story to say. I tell you why. Searching. Wow. You see, my friend, I need someone who feels the needs the same as I. I'm searching. My God, I wrote that about just. Uh, I just. I, I believe that everybody's searching for something. Uh, it, it seems as though it's just. Uh, it's just that uh, it grabbed me searching about a, about a word, you know, one word, searching, 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 search. Oh, oh my God. I've had so many groups play that song. There's a couple of guys that said uh, I sold out. They said I sold out. I said, hell with them. I think they were incorrect. They told me they, they, not, they didn't understand what I was doing because uh, I was doing another thing. They have to understand that music goes somewhere else. Before the bebop era, oh, you know, the, the people were dancing. Oh man, my sister even danced. They, they used to cut a rug, man. They used to cut a rug. You know, even my, even my father used to dance. You know, <laughs> you know, pop pop used to dance. So, uh, they called him Daddy Bug. My music is always danceable. It's always been danceable. You know. Most of my music is, you know, except for Everybody Loves the Sunshine, you can just dance slow. Running away. Doobie-doo, run, run, run. <clears throat> Doobie-doo, run, run. That, that's my biggest hit. Uh, other than uh, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. And they sample like, like, like dogs. I couldn't believe it. It's incredible. I was gearing it toward, toward my crowd. The crowd generally was a black because uh, I had been promoted on radio, black promotion. They never did uh, uh, any white promotion. It was, it was, it was probably pro predominantly black, a black crowd. As we grew over the years, it became more white and, and black, white and black. So it, 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 I get, gained a, a lot of a lot of recognition, you know. Uh, people that have ever heard my music and people have gotten into it, it especially the the the, 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 the English man, the, the Brit, Brits, the Brits. Ooh, hey man, I have I'm doing a 35 day tour. You know, I'm serious because uh, 35 days of touring. You know, seriously, man. So I'm just uh, going to Japan over there, just nice. So it's been very, very, I've been very versatile. I just knew that I had to create music and, and create another dimension in music. Songs like uh, 2000 Black, what I did with Fela Kuti. It said, you better think about your future, y'all, and don't forget the past, because all the things we lived before cannot be lived again, and all our people's tears cannot be shared again. Think about your future, yeah, think about where the present's at. Think about it, think about it. Oh, it's great. I, I had uh, all the fellas, uh, women, with all the way, it's, it's all the fellas' wife, fellas' wives uh, did that. They said, think about it. They didn't say think about it. They said, think about it. Think. They, they couldn't speak, the, you know, they couldn't say think. They said, Think, think, think about it. But it was, it was great. I mean, just to be with him, you know, just to be, share thoughts with him, it was really wonderful. Because, uh, ah, so, you know, I never met a person like that. Person, fellow Kuti was very, very, very heavy. He was very heavy. I was with, with Polydor. It was every, everybody, man, I was at 12 years. I was 12, 12 years. 12 years, uh, all the records I did, I, I got up to uh, uh, three albums a year. The promotion people would complain and say, damn, you already got an album, now we got another one. Uh, now you got another one. We can't even promote the last one. They didn't have enough, enough time. You know, it was crazy. I didn't really get promoted. I was a nice guy and 
and, uh, and uh, I, I talked to the president personally because most everybody else said fuck you, you know. James Brown said fuck you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to curse and everything, but but uh, but that's what he said. Motherfucker, I want my money. They were they were fucking up people. Polydor. So I'm sorry. That's what that's what they were doing. I got wrong, but I. I I believe that they uh, probably didn't pay me the right money. Right. But the people are still dancing to the music. I mean, man, all over the, all over the world, especially you know when, when people really want to be free and just uh, express themselves. They they want to groove, man. I never stopped. I, I'm just happy to say I never stopped. Alicia Keys gave me these mallets because I played on the album. I charged her two thousand dollars, and she sent me a nine thousand dollar check. She let me know that she loved my music, and she lo it was wonderful, man. She got a great studio too. I didn't think her hip hop music was really go going to last, but uh, when I, when I when I caught it after, uh, I, I guess I thought I was thinking of uh, um, Grandmaster Flash, those guys. That that was a, that was a, that was a, the beginning of hip hop, man. It makes me wonder how I keep them going under. You know, it was really hip, you know, because it made me th think. I believe that hip hop is, is is probably here to stay, and and if hip, I conceptually thought about a style of j uh, hip hop jazz, uh, hip hop jazz or jazz and hip hop uh, fused together. I have, uh, I've seen that a uh, uh, couple of groups have sampled different things, but um, I haven't seen it done yet. Like that, 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 that way, the way I like to see it, hip hop, hip hop and jazz. I remember the first time that uh, somebody sampled my song. I have two sons, but I have a son in uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, he said there they, they they sampled your music. It's called X Clan. They're from Brooklyn. They sampled a, a, a red, black, and green. I remember, I was uh, I was very happy, very happy that somebody did something. And I said, "Wow!" Then I started realizing that the hip hop got into me. And, oh my God! You can't imagine how many songs, how many, how many, how much money was made. It's it's, it's a lot, you know. I mean, and almost all of the hip hoppers got into my music, man. Almost all of them, you know, that there was anybody. I didn't get paid though, but that's all right. You know, the company is supposed to return the, the sample, the sample part to me. The company never. I didn't even know that they 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 they, they made money from 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 the records. You know, I, I had no idea. It's really nice to see my music sampled, in order for me to get a new new audience. My music will probably continue to, to be sampled. I think that the, the music can, can enhance people's lives and make them better. And, and if they're listening to the music and really respond to it, they, they'll be better. Uh, just, just hopefully that they, they can, uh, you know, they can get the message, you know.